In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Well, Shoreline, we are in week six of our walk through the book of Daniel, our final week. And I need to tell you, we've saved the best for last because what we have right now is the toughest text of Daniel, the toughest portion of Daniel, and the toughest topic. So I, want you, I just want to pray that you are ready to receive what God wants to speak to you. God, we pray as we open up your word today to the book of Daniel, as we talk about standing strong in spiritual warfare, God, that you will give us power and endurance, take away the distractions, Take away the lies. Let us hear your truth and let us stand strong even when there's spiritual battles happening. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we've been walking through this topic of how do you stand strong in battles. We talked about battling against pride. We talked about battling against discouragement. And today we're talking about battling against, in spiritual warfare, against principalities and powers and enemies. As you're turning to the book of Daniel, I want you to turn to the book of Daniel, but I want to read to you, just listen to these words from Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephesians chapter 6, we read this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, not if the day of evil comes, when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, to stand firm. That call to stand strong, to stand firm in the spiritual battles is something that all of us need to hear. There's another great passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Listen to this, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 4. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We have power in Jesus' name to stand strong in spiritual battles. So I want to tell you today, if you get nervous and anxious when a pastor starts talking about spiritual warfare, you don't need to. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, all the power of God Almighty dwells in you in the person of Jesus Christ. He broke the power of sin, death, hell, and the grave. And he lives in you through his Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid, but be prepared and be aware and be tuned in. And what we're going to learn from Daniel is that this spiritual battle is nothing new. It's not about something just now. It's about through all of time, this battle has been going on. So look with me at the book of Daniel. Uh, turn to chapter 7 is where we're going to begin, and we're going to walk through chapter 7 through 12 and highlight some portions that deal with the reality of spiritual battles. And we're going to learn five lessons, five things we need to know about the spiritual battle that we face if we're a follower of Jesus Christ. There's a few things that are important to know as we get started into this portion of Daniel. First is this. The accounts in Daniel, they're not always in chronological order because that's not the point. If you're looking for a book of the Bible that just lays everything out like a textbook, uh, that's not the book of Daniel because Daniel actually bounces from king to king and chronologically things get kind of changed around because it's, it's dealing with thematic spiritual points, not a, not, not a chronological order. It's historical, but it's not always chronological. Second thing, as we start here in Daniel chapter 7, you have to understand that we're moving into a part of the, of the Bible that is what's called apocalyptic literature. In, in the book of Revelation, parts of Daniel, parts of Ezekiel, there's different places in the Bible that have what's called apocalyptic literature. That's when you get lots of numbers. There's 12 of these, 144,000 of those, three of these. There's animals, creatures and animals. There's images. There's things flying through the air. There's spinning wheels. There's horns. There's battles going on. That's apocalyptic literature. It's, it's highly symbolic. 
capturing spiritual truths with imagery that they understood in the ancient world that we seek to understand the best we can. And so understand that lots of things in, in the apocalyptic literature are dreams and visions. So as we open up God's word to Daniel chapter 7, we're going to look at, the, at these things that we just, we have to know if we're going to walk in victory in the spiritual battles and the warfare that we face. Stand strong in spiritual warfare. How do we do that? Here's number one. We must know that rulers and kingdoms rise and fall, but God's kingdom and God's throne endures forever and ever. There's the first lesson. I'm putting the bottom line up front. I'm telling you right at the very beginning. That's the lesson, that the rulers and kingdoms of this world will rise up and they'll fall. Nations come and go. Kings come and go. Queens come and go. Presidents come and go. Nations come and go. That's the way it is. But God's kingdom and God's throne endures forever and ever. And we see this in Daniel chapter 7. And again, because we're covering a big portion, we're going to take selected texts and dig into those. So look with me at Daniel 7, beginning in verse 9. And we read this. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair on his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. The river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. This ancient of days is this picture of the living God that we worship. That he's on the throne, that he is glorious, that he is powerful. And so as Daniel begins to unfold this vision, this dream, this apocalyptic kind of forecasting of where the world is going, nations to come that will rise and fall, and the kingdom of God that will rise and rise and rise and last forever and ever. He paints this amazing picture. This ancient of days is, is Yahweh, the God that we worship, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This is the God we worship. And so, so here's what we have to understand if we're going to stand strong against the spiritual battles that we face. Follow, worship, and bow down to only the ancient of days. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, our God. If you want to overcome spiritual battles, keep your knees bowed. Man. Get into worship. Sing more songs of praise. Spend more time opening the word of God. Dig into God's truth. Celebrate his, him. Praise him. Glorify him. As you drive in your car, put on some worship music. As you're, home, as you're at home, uh, put on some YouTube worship videos and just be captured by praise and giving glory to the living God. Those who want to stand strong in the spiritual battle will learn to worship with passion and let their heart be connected with the heart of God. This is why at Shirley we talk about wholehearted worship as one of the markers of spiritual growth. If you want to be mature spiritually, you've got to grow as a wholehearted worshiper of the living God. So here's the second thing that we need to know if we're going to stand strong in the spiritual battles we're going to face in this world. We must know that Jesus the Messiah rules and reigns eternally. And his good news is for all times and all people, for all nations. We've got to understand that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is not just in the New Testament, but we meet Jesus Christ right here in the book of Daniel. He is the Son of Man. And we're going to see the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, alive and at work. So we must know that Jesus the Messiah rules and reigns eternally. His good news isn't just for New Testament times, it's for all of history. And so for the Old Testament people, he was the coming Messiah they put their faith in. For us, he's the Messiah who has already come. And for all people, he opens the door to eternity if they'll put their faith in him as Savior and Lord. So look with me at Daniel 7, verses 13 to 14, and then we're going to jump to verses 26 to 28. And, and what's happening here is we're getting a picture of this vision that Daniel is having. In this vision, he sees these four creatures. And remember, it's apocalyptic literature, lots of creatures, flying things, eyes, horns. It's, it's, it's real, for us, very confusing, but it's painting a picture of history. And so we see a lion, and then a bear, and then a leopard, and then this great beast who's worse than the other beasts. And then there's these horns with eyes on them, and it's just this kind of crazy picture. And if you've been reading, it's like, whoa, there's a lot going on here. 
But after we've seen these four different creatures that we find out later are four king, successive kingdoms that rise and fall, what we see is the final kingdom that rules all kingdoms of the world, and that's the kingdom ruled by Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. So after seeing this image of a lion, and then a bear, then a leopard, then a beast, these four kingdoms, we see in verse 13, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshiped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion and he will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. This is Jesus Christ, his kingdom, the Savior, the Lord of Lords. So, so the Ancient of Days, God the Father, has, has the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, the Son, come to him. It's his kingdom that will last forever. So there's a spiritual reality going on here. And then we learn that these four creatures that have come before are, are these four different kingdoms that are, that are rising and falling and rising and falling. And the fourth kingdom is the worst of all of them. And the king of that kingdom is the worst of all. And, he, and he's blaspheming against God and he's pushing back. And so what we read is in verse 26, but the court will sit and his power, the, the power of this king of this fourth kingdom, and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. I love that. His power is taken away, and it's completely destroyed forever. Get the point? Man, he's done with. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the most holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all the rulers will worship and obey him. These four kingdoms, these four creatures, these four leaders rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. But the kingdom of God, ruled by Jesus Christ the Messiah, lasts forever and ever. And every battle, every battle is won in the name and the power of Jesus, the Son of Man. He conquers all, he rules all, and he reigns over all. So if you're in a battle right now, I mean, you're in a battle economically. You're in a battle relationally. You're in a battle spiritually. Behind all of these things is the reality of a spiritual battle going on. But remember this. We know who wins. We know who rules and reigns. We know whose kingdom will last forever and ever and ever. Whatever battle you're facing right now, look to Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the ruler of all. Whatever battle you face next week, next month, next year, or a decade from now, he'll still be on the throne and he'll still have all the power and the glory. Here's the third thing that we need to know. We must know that one of the greatest weapons in the spiritual battle is prayer. And confession has power we often fail to recognize. In the spiritual battles you will face, in the spiritual battles I will face, in the spiritual battles that Daniel faced, prayer is powerful. Man, when you're in the middle of a battle, don't stop praying. Don't turn your back on God. Man, run into his arms. Cry out to him. And interestingly, one of the most powerful kinds of prayer is confession. And we can come to God and say, God, I messed up here. I'm out of line here. Help me here, Lord. There is power when we confess our need of God. So look with me at Daniel chapter 9. And we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 23, but we're going to focus on verses 20 to 23. So in Daniel chapter 9, we read this. While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel. So now Daniel is praying. He's speaking to God. He's praying to God. He's confessing his sin and the sin of his people. So he's not only confessing his own sin, but the sin of his nation. And there are plenty of sins to go. Man, if you started confessing the sins of our nation, there's plenty of sin to go around, man. There's, there's plenty to confess. And so he's saying, I'm confessing my sin and the sin of my people and making my request to the Lord my God for his holy hill. Now listen to this. While I was still in prayer, in the middle of this prayer of confession, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in swift flight. Gabriel is a heavenly messenger. And the word messenger is angel. Angel is messenger. Messenger is angel. He's this heavenly messenger, this angelic being. And Gabriel, the man I had seen earlier in the vision, came to me in swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice. 
He instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. Now listen to this. As soon as you began to pray, man, power's unleashed. As soon as you began to pray, a word went out, which I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. So here's what we need to understand. When Daniel starts praying, things in the heavenly realm start to happen. Now, I'm not going to try in this sermon to explain exactly how angels and demons interact. I'm not going to write a book about it and try to explain it all because the Bible doesn't give us all that much detail. But it makes it very clear in this portion of the Bible that there's angelic beings and demonic beings. And even as countries and, and leaders have conflict in an earthly sense, behind all of that, there's spiritual conflict going on. And there's actually angelic beings who are at battle with demonic beings, fallen angels. And, and we don't see that, but that's going on behind the scenes. And yet we see that over all of that, God rules and reigns, and he's on the throne. So we find out that Gabriel, this, this angelic being, is now coming to Daniel in, as he's praying to give an answer to that prayer. And, and within this prayer, Daniel is confessing. And this is very important. He says, I'm speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel. I want to pause there for a minute. And I want to challenge you to not only grow in prayer. Another one of our spiritual markers of maturity is passionate prayer. You want to be mature in faith? Grow in prayer. And a part of prayer is confession. There is power when we come to God and say, God, I messed up. I blew it. I'm sorry. If you're a Christian, when you first became a Christian, you confessed your sin. Jesus forgave you. He entered your life. He washed you clean. But as we walk through our days, we still mess up. We still sin and rebel against God. We need to bring that and lay it before the Lord. We need to say, God, I confess. I got this crummy attitude toward this person. Will you help me? There's power in that. God, I confess. I've been making choices with my thoughts, with my words, with my actions that don't honor you. I confess it. Forgive me and give me power to change. There's power in confession. So if you want to crush pride, break the grip of the enemy, and learn to confess with freedom and passion, we can do that as, as we become people of prayer and people of confession. We're going to crush pride, break the grip of the enemy, and learn to confess with freedom and passion. You want to unleash spiritual power. You want to stand strong in spiritual battles. Be quick to confess to God. Man, when you mess up and you know you're out of line, don't try to hide it from God. Don't lie to God and say, oh, God, I'm doing fine. You know, it was just a little misstep. No, I sinned. I rebelled. I was out of line. Get on your knees and confess it to God. There's power in that. And actually, in the book of James, in the New Testament, we're told actually to confess our sins to one another. There's actually power in confessing our sins to God, but going to somebody else and saying, I really messed up. Will you pray for me? Will you help me? Will you keep me accountable? There's, when we confess conditions of our heart or our mind or our lives that dishonor God and we bring it to the light, when you bring sin into the light, it begins to die. When you won't confess, when I won't confess and we hide it in the dark, it comes to life in the dark and it poisons our soul. And I, th I think I shared this one time before, but Sherry and I, before we got married, we made a decision that as we walked into our relationship and as we walked into our marriage relationship, that if either of us ever found ourselves attracted to another person, if I, if I had a woman in my life that I was feeling drawn to, emotionally drawn to, uh, you know, spiritually drawn to, physically drawn to, and I felt like I was being attracted to I, that I would confess it to Sherry. I promised her that before I got married. I'm not recommending everyone doing this. I'm just telling you what Sherry and I did before we were married. I said, Sherry, if I ever find myself drawn to another woman, I will tell you. I'll put it in the light. And she said, I promise if I ever find myself drawn to a man besides you, I will tell you. Now, let me be clear. clear. We weren't talking about like if, if I saw somebody and thought, oh, she's pretty or she's bright or I, I like her. She's not that. I mean, you, you recognize that people are attractive or attractive physically or spiritually. Or, but, there's, but I'm talking about I said, if my heart starts to be drawn towards that person, and I, feel, and, I, and I know something's not right, before I take any action, but my heart's wandering towards that person, I'm going to tell my wife. She promised to do the same. Well, I actually thought to myself when we made that promise, if that ever happens, it will be because my heart wanders or I'm drawn to someone else. But one day, a ways into our marriage, we had, the three, we had our three boys. They were like toddler to young child, a busy time. We're both involved in lots of ministry. Sherry said to me, Kevin, I need to talk to you about something. And my wife looked at me and she said, I need to confess 
that I'm finding myself attracted to another man. And she told me who it was and what was going on in her heart. I mean, she hadn't taken any action on it. She wasn't hanging out with this person, but her heart was starting to wander and sin was starting to creep in. And she told me, she put it in the light. When she told me who the person was, you know what I said to her? I said, I can see why you'd be attracted. Not physically so much as spirit. It was like a, it was a, a great godly person. There was a lot of attractive things about this person. I said, I'm not a woman. I'm not attracted to him that way, but I can see he's an attractive person. But I said, don't you ever talk to him again. <laughs> I said, you know, you know don't, stay away from this guy. And she did. But here's what happened. When she confessed that in prayer and put it in the light, that spiritual battle died. And a matter of a couple weeks later, she said, I don't even know why I felt attracted to that person. If she'd have kept it in the dark and not confessed it, I'm convinced it would have grown. Now, what I'd love to do is say to you, and you know, and I've never had a struggle like that. But a couple years later, there was a woman who was actually part of our church, godly woman, actually who knew Sherry, and Sherry loved and respected her. And she was a single woman, and I found something in my heart started to be attracted to her. More than just, oh, she's a nice person, or you know, it, there was something growing in my heart, and it wasn't honoring to Jesus. And I knew it. And I, and I tried to kind of shut it off, but it kind of kept growing. I brought it to the light. I went to Sherry. I said, Sherry, I got to confess to you. And she said, you stay away from that person. And I did. But when I put it in the light, it died. Here's the spiritual battle. The enemy puts these seeds of temptation. And when we confess it to God, confess it to each other, and take it from darkness to light, it dies. There's power in prayer and power in confession. And so Daniel confesses to God for himself and for his people. He cries out to God. And maybe for you right now, you're saying, man, there's some hidden sin in my life that I got to confess to God. Always confess to God first. And if God calls you and and convicts you to confess to someone else, to a godly Christian person you respect, then follow that prompting and follow that leading. It might be difficult, but it won't be nearly as difficult as if you keep going down that road of sin, keep it in the darkness and let it consume you. If there's hidden sin, if there's pride in our hearts, we can confess it to God. Here's the fourth thing we need to know if we're going to stand strong in spiritual warfare and spiritual battles. Number four, we must know that angels and demons are real and there's a spiritual battle raging. But we know how the story ends. We we have to acknowledge that even though we can't see angels, we can't see demonic work, we can see the impact of those things but we have to acknowledge that there is a spiritual world beyond this world. Why? Because the Bible tells us that 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 is true, that there is a a world that is spiritual that's just as real as our physical world. Now again, we can't pull back the veil and see all that's happening. And there's people that have written some creative, interesting books about that and they've, they've filled in all the blanks for the Bible. Let me tell you what I don't like to do as a pastor. I don't like to fill in the blanks in the Bible. If there's blanks, I think God left them there for a reason. So I'm not gonna fill them in and explain to you what the Bible doesn't say. But I can tell you this that angels and demons are real. There's a battle going on. And we know that Jesus wins. We don't have to be afraid, but we better acknowledge this reality. So look with me at Daniel chapter 10. As we're walking through this this, this portion of the Bible, telling, telling kind of what's to come and what's going on. Daniel 10, beginning in verse 12. And what's happened now is, is an angelic being, a heavenly messenger, a heavenly warrior has come to Daniel. So, and he's talking to Daniel. So verse 12, then he continued. Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. He's praying, he's seeking God, he's being humble, and your words were heard. Now, this is really interesting. Watch what happens here. So this angelic messenger or being says, uh, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. So again, Daniel's prayers bring the power of heaven, bring an angelic messenger or being. I've come in response to them. Watch this in verse 13. But the prince of of the Persian kingdom, this is a demonic being, but the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. So this, this angelic being is saying, I came when you started praying, but for 21 days in the heavenly realms, I'm at a battle with the prince of the Persian kingdom. That prince means at that point, it means a demonic being. So this angelic being and this demonic being are battling. He's trying to get to Daniel. So how does all this work? I don't know. I'm just telling you what it says, that there's this battle going on. He resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, this is an angelic, one of the the strongest angelic beings. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. So that's tag team, two on one, because I was detained with the king of Persia, meaning, again, these are spiritual beings. 
Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns of time yet to come. So all we know is one angelic being is coming in response to prayer. And a demonic being comes and fights for about three weeks. Another angelic being comes and helps out, pins down this demonic being. And so this one angelic being comes to speak to Daniel. There's something going on here. Again, I'm not going to parse it and break it down as much as to say this is happening. And then verse 20. So he said, do you know why I've come to you? Soon I will return in flight uh, to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first I will tell you, and again, that prince is a demonic being. The prince of Greece will come. But first I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. So apparently Michael, the, the archangel Michael, is a prince over God's people in this battle. Now, <sighs> there's a lot going on here. And like I said, I'm not going to try to fill in the blanks. But I'm going to tell you this. We get a little peek behind the veil. And there, there is this spiritual world and this battle going on. And we see the battle here in our world. And we know that he, Jesus, who's in us, is greater than the one who's in the world. We know who wins the battle. But that battle is still going on. And I would say this. If we ignore the battle, we become an easy target for the enemy. If we say, I don't like this, I don't want to talk about it, we become a target. If we say, that's not real. Saying that the spiritual battle isn't real doesn't make it any less real. It just makes us ignorant and an easy target. Because we're not prepared to stand in the power of Jesus. So pay attention. And stay tuned in and respond to God's leading in your life and stand in the power and the name and the glory of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the victor over all. And then a fifth thing we have to know. We must know that eternal issues are at hand in this life. This book of Daniel gives us this understanding, this picture that, that heaven and hell are real there's an eternal condition for people. It's not just that that's taught in the New Testament. That's found all the way book, back in the book of Daniel. So in Daniel chapter 12, we begin with verse 1. At that, at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, this, this archangel, this angelic being, at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, the people of God, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Now listen to this. Some to everlasting life, heaven, and others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who, those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. There is an eternal battle going on. This is why at Shoreline we preach the message of Jesus. We invite people to receive Jesus Christ because every single person will spend forever with God and glory or separate from God. And it matters. It matters more than we know. So here's what we need to understand. The greatest battle and the most absolute victory was won on the cross. So share the good news freely, boldly, and organically. That's what we have to understand. Heaven is at stake and the battle has already been won when God Almighty entered human flesh and human history, Jesus Christ, Christmas, when he came. He lived a life with no sin, and yet he died for our sins in our place on the cross, and he bore our shame, he took our punishment, and he died in our place. And for three days he was dead, and on the third day he crushed the back of hell and death, and he rose again in glory, and he ascended to heaven, and he sent his Holy Spirit who invites us to come to Jesus. If you're a follower of Jesus, man, walk in that power. Know that you walk in the power of the risen Christ. If you're not yet a follower of Jesus, I'm so glad you're coming to Shoreline because you're going to hear about Jesus again and again and again. And when you're ready, and when you're ready to say, I want to receive Jesus and follow him, we're ready to walk with you to the foot of the cross and let you pray with him and help you know how to pray and to receive Jesus Christ. If you even want to do that today, at the prayer time at the end of the service, if you call in and say, I want to pray with someone to receive Jesus Christ, they will walk, with, walk you through a prayer to give your heart to him and then to walk in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ to take his hand and walk with him all the rest of your life and into eternity. 
Today we're talking about standing strong in spiritual warfare in the battles. So here's a question for you. Are you aware of the battles raging? Do you understand that there are battles raging? Yes, in your life. Yes, in this world. But behind all of this. And the power of Jesus, will you stand strong in his ways? Will you enter into the battle in the name and the power of Jesus? Man, when you, when you see the enemy, when you sense the enemy is at work, will you, will you hold to God's word? Will you confess your sin? Will you turn away from it? Will you say, Jesus, I follow you. I submit to you. I yield my life to you. I will follow you no matter what happens. Will you stand against the places you see the enemy at work and stand for the places that Jesus calls you to go? That's, that's the way that we stand strong in the battles is to realize there is a battle to stand in the name of Jesus Christ and the power of Jesus Christ, to confess our sins and our need, to ask for his help and his power. So I want to finish by doing that with you, just asking God to open our eyes and our hearts and our lives to step into whatever we have to step into, to stand strong against the enemy. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you that you have won the battle, that you rule and reign, that all the power and the forces of hell have been crushed under your feet, that when you said it is finished, Our sin was dealt with. And yet, Lord, in this world, there's still skirmishes and battles going on. So in the name of Jesus, in the power of Jesus, let us recognize where the enemy is at work in the lives of others, in the lives of our world, in our own lives. Let us confess and repent and turn from sin and turn our hearts back to you. Let us, in your power and in your name and with your word on our lips, speak the truth and stand against the lies of the enemy. And Lord Jesus, remind us that you who are in us are greater than the one who's in the world. And that if we stand with you, we already stand in victory. We give you praise for this truth and pray that we will walk in it with confidence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, before I send you off with a word of blessing, a couple quick things. If you want prayer, and particularly if you say, I want to pray with someone and say, how do I become a follower of Jesus and give my heart and my life to him? You just call that number. If you have a need, a joy, call or email and we'll pray with you right now. Also, if you're new at Shoreline, use the number that's provided and just text welcome. And then we want to contact you and give you a great, warm, personal welcome. If you want to know about anything happening in the life of Shoreline, just send a note to info at shoreline.church and we'll get you back all the information we have to help you move forward. And then after I finish with a quick word of blessing, uh, just stay on for just a moment. And we have a little video highlighting some important things coming your way. And we want you to be in touch with what's happening in the life of your church. And so just stick around for a couple minutes and watch that video. As we come to the end of this journey through the book of Daniel, may God fill you with his power and his presence. May you consistently pursue and follow Jesus whatever you face. Whatever battle comes your way, a battle against pride, a battle against discouragement, a battle against the enemy, stand in the victory of Jesus Christ. And as you stand in victory, give him the praise and the glory. God bless you. Have a great week. And we'll see you next Sunday.